Hello all my crafty friends. Let's do something different today. I'm going to show you exactly step by step how to do a reverse decoupage on a clear glass plate. I'll be using a couple different crackle effects. It's super easy and a lot of fun. Just a few simple supplies. Follow along with me and let's make a mess. I'm using a clear glass plate that I purchased from the dollar store and I'm cleaning it with an alcohol wipe to make sure there's no dirt or fingerprints on it. When you're doing a reverse decoupage, you remember that everything you do is in reverse. We're going to be working on the underside of the plate only and nothing on the top. Everything that you would normally do last we'll be doing first. I'm going to give the back of the plate a coat of Polyvine Multi-Surface Lacquer. This product removes the shine from the plate and gives it a good base for everything we're doing to stick to. I'm using a round napkin, which is so awesome. They're perfect for this type of decoupaging. Instead of having four pictures in all four corners, like a normal napkin, the round ones are just one picture, so they work perfectly. This is a three-ply napkin, and I'm only going to be using the top layer with the print on it. I'm removing the bottom two layers. The last layer is attached quite well, so be careful not to pull too hard. You don't want to rip your napkin. All the products that I'll be using today, the napkin paint, varnishes, crackle systems, right down to the paint brushes, have been ordered from and are available at decoupagenapkins.com, and I'll tell you all about them shortly. I set the napkin to the side while I painted the multi-surface lacquer on the plate. I'll let that dry for about an hour. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. The next step is one of the crackle systems. I'm using Pentart's Fine Line Crackle Varnish. It's a two-part system and I'm brushing on component number one. I'll let that dry for about an hour or so until it's clear. Notice that I'm painting everything from the center of the plate outward to the edge. This will prevent any of the paints and varnishes from getting on the top of the plate. If you paint from the edge of the plate towards the center, you'll get a large glob of paint or varnish on the edge of your plate. Once dry, I'll brush on component number two. This step is an amber color. Use thin, even strokes. If you get a buildup or drips anywhere, it'll show when dry. I'll let this dry for a couple of hours. Once dry, you'll see the cracks. I marked my starting point on the other side of the plate with some blue masking tape, so I'd be able to tell when to stop. I didn't want to just keep painting in circles. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub-on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more. Over 7,000 products. They carry three lines of paint. Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint, clay mud paint, and pentart paints, and a wide range of colors. They are wonderful to work with and send out their orders fast. They are truly your one-stop shop for craft supplies. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to their newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you some links in my description box below. The crackle finish is dry and there are some nice cracks. Now I'm going to add some antiquing to bring out all those nice cracks. I'm using Pentart Antiquing Paste in Umber. I'm rubbing it on with my finger and then wiping it off with a soft cloth. It will stay in all those cracks so they can be seen. And this looks so nice. There are many types of crackle finishes. This particular one gives you large fine cracks that look like vintage porcelain. After using fine line crackle varnish, you cannot use any water-based products. 
it will ruin your crackle finish. You can only use solvent based antiques and sealers. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click the bell. I'll let this dry for about an hour. I need to seal the crackle finish with a solvent based clear varnish before I can move on. The rest of the products I'm going to be using are not solvent based, so this is an important step. If you use the fine line crackle, make sure you don't skip this step. I put the plate on a paint container to lift it off the table. I'm applying this in the same way as the other steps, going from the center of the plate towards the edge. I'll let this dry for two to four hours. I'm using the multi-surface lacquer as my decoupage glue because it has such great adhesion. I'll give the entire plate a very generous coat. I have the plate elevated on a paint container to get the edges off my work table. Now I'm taking my round napkin and laying it on the center of the plate. I'm laying it down on the plate upside down so the good side of the napkin is showing through the plate on the other side. I brush the glue very gently so as not to tear my napkin from the center outward over the first edge. Now brushing from the crown of the plate down towards the bottom edge. Make sure you use a lot of glue and saturate the napkin so you get good adhesion and no air bubbles. Don't be concerned if you get any wrinkles. The crackle finish we just did will hide any imperfections. I'm making sure I have the edge of the plate and the napkin saturated with glue. Only to the edge though, not going over the edge onto the sides or the top of the plate. All the products and tools I use and recommend in my videos have been tested by me. I won't suggest something that I haven't used myself. Each product will be listed in my description box below and will have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. That will need to dry for several hours. My glue is dry, so now it's time to trim off the excess napkin around the edge of the plate. When you turn the plate over, you should see the right side of the napkin. From the back side of the plate, use some sandpaper going in a downward motion around the entire edge of the plate. The sandpaper will shear off the excess napkin in a beautiful, precise cut. If there's some glue on the edge of the plate, use the sandpaper to remove it. I'm using Dixie Belle white chalk paint on the underside of the plate. I have to say, I really like this paint. It's thick and creamy and goes on really nice. Just like with normal decoupage, the white paint makes the print on the napkin stand out so beautifully. I'll put two coats of paint on and let it dry for a couple of hours. This plate is really looking great, but we're going to make it look even better. I'm sanding off any excess paint that may have gotten on the edge of the plate. The back of the plate looks just a touch boring, so we're going to jazz it up a little bit by adding a different type of crackle finish. This is Crackalore, three part system, and it's going to make the back of this plate look like vintage pottery. I'm brushing on the base coat right now, and I'll let that dry for about an hour. When it's dry, it remains a little sticky, so don't let that fool you. After an hour, you're safe to proceed with step number two. 
Now I'm brushing on step number two, the top coat. I'll let that dry for an hour as well. Once that dries, there will be hundreds of little cracks all over the plate, but you won't see them until we add the dark highlighter. Okay, now I'm going to add the dark highlighter. I'm wiping it on with a soft cloth and then wiping it off with another soft cloth. It will remain in all the tiny little cracks, making them stand out. I love this look. This highlighter also comes in white, in case you're working on a dark background, which we will do on a future plate video. I'm going to be doing a series of reverse decoupage plates. Each video will be something different with different techniques to try. I haven't even decided how many I'm going to do yet. I'm just going to keep doing them until I run out of ideas. So help me out. If you have an idea for a plate, let me know in the comments. In the next few weeks, I'll be doing an Easter plate. You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. They're going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to add a coat of Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. I want this plate to be usable and withstand hand washing. This varnish is highly waterproof and heat resistant, so it's perfect for a finished coat on this plate or any projects that you'll be putting in a kitchen or bathroom. I'm using satin finish, but it's also available in dead flat if you prefer a matte finish. This plate can be hand washed but make sure you don't put this in a dishwasher or leave it submerged in water. I'm using a special paintbrush that is made by Polyvind specifically for their varnishes. It's wonderful and spreads the varnish out nicely, eliminating brush marks. I love the way this plate is coming together, but now just one final touch. Let's add some elegance with a gold trim. I'm using Pentart paint in the color gold, and it's a metallic color. I'm using my finger and running it along just the outside edge of the plate, making sure it doesn't go on the top or the bottom of the plate. If it does, I'm wiping it off right away. I have better control using my finger instead of a brush. If you get any on the top of the plate, it'll wipe off clean. I put varnish on the underside of the plate so it'll wipe off there easily as well. You just have to get it right away. Once it dries, it'll be a little harder to get off. So I wipe as I go. I ended up putting two coats on to make sure the gold was bright and pretty. The gold edge gives the plate a high end look as well as an elegant touch. I'm very impressed with the Pentart paint. It goes on very smooth, the color is rich, and it has great coverage. Usually metallic paints don't have great coverage, but this one does. It really almost didn't need two coats, but I did two just to make the color a little richer. Don't forget, all of the wonderful products I'm using today can be found at my favorite place for craft supplies decoupagenapkins.com The gold paint is now dry and I'm going to give the plate a final coat of Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. I propped the plate up on a paint jar so the edges were off my work table. I'm going to make sure I get the varnish along the gold edge and I'm wiping off anything that gets on the top of the plate. For durability's sake, I gave this plate two more coats of varnish off camera. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.